Hi, everybody. I'm Pam, the messenger of love. Welcome to the magical message of love tonight. So tonight's going to be really fun and also just enlightening. We're really going to talk about some deep topics tonight, and I am going to bring in several different spirits and we'll see what they have to say about love energy, what they have learned since being on the other side. And if, if you have any questions for the spirits that come through, or if you have a question for your spirit guides, angels, anything you would like to know, you can put your questions in the chat at any time. Also, if you want to just let me know where you're from, you know, where you're, you're listening from, that would be great to know as well. So tonight I want to talk about the power of beliefs. Um, this is something that I've really been focusing on recently and I want y'all to think about how your beliefs are formed, not just from within what you may have created in your mind, just from yourself, but your beliefs are influenced from a lot of different things. So you could be exposed to certain situations. You might have had a certain um, upbringing, you know, your family, and you might have taken on some of the beliefs from your family or maybe from friends that you're around, maybe from other people that you interact with, um, other experiences that you've had, you know, whether there's something big or small, there's a lot of programming that goes on, you know, maybe from watching TV, from looking at the media, it's really easy to dive into those other beliefs and begin to take them on and feel like they're yours. And, you know, that's something that you must follow in your mind. And you start to go in that direction where you're not being in your authentic um, version of yourself. You're not being your true self. You're not following what your, is your calling. You're kind of following what other people may have persuaded you to do. So let me give an example. Let's say that you're talking about something that you want to do. Um, you've thought about this new path that you want to take. Like you want to change careers completely. You want to do something new, maybe start your own business. Maybe you're in a relationship and it's, you know, something that's either new or maybe it's just something that you've talked about with your friends. Sometimes people will give their opinions about things. And when they're doing that, they're, you know, trying to be supportive and we all, you know, take that in and kind of see where that goes. But just know that when somebody is giving you their opinion, their point of view, their perspective, that is their perspective. Remember to hold your own space for what feels right for you because it's possible that you could take on all of those different thoughts, right? That energy, that vibration, that frequency of what is right for that person and begin to follow that. So maybe they tell you, Hey, I don't think that's a good business idea. I don't like that. that I don't think that's right for you. I don't think, are you sure you want to do that? You know, have you ever had somebody ask you that? Are you really sure you want to do that? That sounds kind of weird. So, when people are doing that, maybe they're challenging you a little bit to look at it in more depth. And that's good to like really get the bigger perspective of it. But remember that you are the director of your destiny in life. So you get to decide. So maybe other people may not see your perspective. They may not see the image you have created in, in your heart and your mind of what you desire. They may not have that imagination that you possess to make it something that's possible that becomes real and that becomes something that is good for you. So just know that when you get opinions from the other people, you know, sometimes you have to take that into consideration that your voice, your thoughts, your, your inner knowing is the most important part of it to remember that and to sometimes step out of your decisions and the things that are coming through in your life and step outside as the observer and just kind of see, how do I see this from, from a different perspective? What does this look like for me? Is this the path that is better aligned with my heart or am I, you know, maybe jumping into something too soon and I haven't really looked at it completely or maybe am I ready and I've been just kind of holding myself back. And so maybe that outside perspective, not from somebody else, but just from you and your higher self, just looking at it and seeing, okay, this is something I'm ready for. And maybe I have been holding myself back. Maybe I have been trying to talk myself out of it. It's possible that there's a lot of things that 
you could have in your dreams that you've been thinking about for years, maybe for a very long time that you have known that is something that feels like it's of interest to you. It's a, it's a passion that maybe never came alive. Just know that we're not guaranteed, you know, that we'll be here tomorrow. So allow those to come out more and begin to pursue those dreams, even if they're just tiny little starting points of things that you could do with your life. Those will begin to get you into your the resonance of you that's like a good frequency that actually starts to feed you back and forth to where you're doing the, the action towards your dream. And that brings in that frequency more, right? And it shifts you into it and you feel better and you start to feel like everything's good because see, when you're out of alignment and you're not in that pathway, let's say you jump off your pathway and you go do something else for a while and you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being authentic and saying, Hey, this is, um, this is not right. Sometimes we get off the path for a while and we might go on a little adventure, but sometimes we go too far off the path and we're way far off from where we really originated from and what our purpose is for, you know, bringing in our existence here, what our, what our um, gifts are, what, what is our, what are our talents and reasons for being here? So sometimes the universe will bring you back into that and say, okay, you've been off the path for a while. Now let's come back and let's see if we can realign with what is the right pathway for you. And also you may change that at times too. You may slightly shift because you may start to go down that path and say, okay, well, this was working and now this is not working. And I think I learned something over here. So let me bring that in now. So you're always going to add things to those steps and how you get there along the way. And of course you're taking those moments to enjoy that experience, but just know that when you go too far off, you will be brought back. The universe will bring you back to remember this is who you are. This is why you came here. This is what we want you to do. So if you're joining me tonight, you can go ahead and put, a question in the chat at any time. If you have a question to a spirit, to a spirit guide, an angel, um, if you have just a general question for me, let me know in the chat or let me know where you're from and I'll get back to that whenever I find your questions in the chat. Um, so tonight I'm going to bring in a few spirits and we're going to kind of stay on this same theme and topic right now and they'll talk a little bit more in depth about what this means for them from their perspective on the other side and how they want to help us on our paths and learn more about our experience on earth so tonight the first spirit that i'm bringing in is princess diana now one of the things that i was really picking up strongly from her one thing that came out to me is her passion for her beliefs. And when she spoke to me, I could hear her voice and she seemed really, you know, passionate about the topics she was interested in. And she used, you know, certain words that really resonated with her. And she also talked about how she came here from an angelic realm. And so she was, of this higher vibration coming down here to do a lot of work upon the earth, you know, to be basically a, an angelic light worker to open up people's hearts to different um, problems in the world, especially as they revolved around children and how she felt like she was here to be an earth angel for the children on the earth. So one of the things she said is she talked about, um, being yourself. Um, and also I want to reference that she has mentioned to me that she actually does prefer to be called lady Diana. So I just want to say that. So, um, we're going to refer to her as that as well, lady Diana. And she said, be yourself and, and think about what's holding you back. Is it fear? So if fear is holding you back, what can we do? to release that fear, to move forward, to be more in your light and to take chances and to say, you know, why am I kind of sitting back and observing my life? Why am I not doing all the things that 
I really want to do to feel like I'm making a difference. And she said, you know, what if you just believed? What if you believed in that power, that stronger power of belief where you knew that if you put yourself into it, you could do anything, you could be anything, you know, you could help people and make a difference in the world. So she's saying, what if you could believe? What if you did believe? If you just allowed yourself to do that. And then she talked a lot about what I mentioned earlier about taking on the beliefs of other people and allowing that to misdirect you at times or maybe even get the feeling of your energy being squashed a little bit or you being silenced, your voice silenced and not having the opportunity to present your real self. Like maybe sometimes, you know, you might be shy and introverted and that's a possibility, but maybe sometimes even when you're extroverted, you don't find the way to say what is in your heart, what is the truth, because you're trying maybe to fit in a little bit or you don't want to rock the boat or whatever that is. <clears throat> but she's saying, you know, begin to believe in yourself more. Stop doubting yourself. Sometimes when we have to do something really big and there's this new endeavor in our life, a new opening to something, we look at it from afar and we start to think, I can't do that. I'm not sure. We start doubting ourselves. Do I really have what it takes? We say all of those things. Just remember that when you believe in yourself, that is a big part of it. But also, as you go into this new energy and you start to take those steps, that's where you create the believing more. You know, it's like the doing, the action is what creates that belief. So sometimes you kind of have to nudge yourself a little bit if you're standing back and not taking the chances and not moving forward in some way, but just observing what you want, then just know that if you take just a little bit of step forward, you just take a little bit of a movement with what you want you'll begin to believe it. And so your mind will become stronger for that manifestation. And then, you know, your heart gets into that alignment as well. And so then it just keeps moving and you keep opening up and it becomes bigger and bigger. But you always start with that first belief in yourself, you know, that first powerful belief saying, I can do this. This is what I desire. And that's how you begin to grow it. So Lady Diana talked about, if someone gives you advice, advice like we mentioned er, earlier, if and it, if and it doesn't if it doesn't resonate with you, if you feel like it's really not in alignment with what you're trying to do, just say thank you for sharing, and then just go about and do what you feel called to do, and what is in your heart and your best interest. Because you know you you know just acknowledge when you're getting that information, and sometimes it'll be useful to you, and sometimes it may not. But don't let it stop you. Just acknowledge it and say thank you for sharing and go ahead and move on your path. Don't see it as an obstacle, but see it as a way that the universe is saying, do you really want this? And that is how the universe just kind of checks in with you. And it gives you a point of reference and a way to say, well, do I need to refine this a little bit? Do I need to get a little more prepared? Do I need to do something else? Do I need to you know, study something, You know, learn something about myself, heal something? And that way the universe is giving you that time if you need it to be more prepared. So that's why that comes up, but just know that shouldn't stop you. Those things will happen where people will question you. They'll question your authenticity. Um, you know, they'll say, are you really going to do that? And, and that's when you need to fight for yourself and what you believe in. Um, so lady Diana also talked about diplomacy and not taking sides. She said that, you know, standing, when we stand um, united together as one, then we're more connected and that connects our energy. And there's not one part of the beliefs and the perspectives that is more dominant than the other. It's just acknowledging that it all exists and we can all coexist in this way where we're diplomats, you know, rather than being, um, you know, in that moment, that way of that energy of judging each other or kind of uh, looking at something as right or wrong, black and white kind of thing. 
and she said, you know, accepting when you do when you go into this diplomacy thought, you you accept what is instead of making it into what it isn't. So this is really important because when you are accepting it, you're just acknowledging that all perspectives are okay. But when you fight it, then it becomes this, oh, it can't be this and it can't be that. And this is right. And this is wrong. And that just creates a lot of conflict in the world and a lot of battles about things that don't really need to be there. And, you know, she said, all is fair and faith and love and all pathways lead to love. War isn't a battle in the heart. It is a battle of the mind. So if you think about that, that is true. No matter if we're talking about, you know, like a real battle, like a physical battle, sometimes we're talking about the battle of people's, you know, their thoughts like going against each other and not being able to agree with each other or come to a compromise. And, you know, it's almost like you have to step out of your own, you know, your own view for a moment to see the other person's view and just say, okay, well, I see that too. And that's, that's interesting. And then you still have your stance. It doesn't take away from your voice to have someone else have their perspective. Keep following your path. Keep holding your beliefs. But know that you can accept another person's perspective as true as well. Thank you for the comment. Yes, this is a very interesting topic today. I've been really thinking about it a lot today. A lot of stuff was coming through me earlier. If you're just now joining, you can join in the chat. I'm talking with Lady Diana, also known as Princess Diana, and we're talking with a few spirits about, um, you know, our beliefs and our faith and how we can get on the right path by acknowledging our true authentic self. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about these different topics with these spirits tonight. If you have a question to the spirit directly or to a spirit guide or an angel, you can put your question in the chat and I'll get to it in a moment. So... When I was thinking about this a lot, you know, I realized how we're just at a time right now in the world where there is a lot of conflict. You know, it's like we're in the last battle, if you will, all over the place in different categories of are we going to go into a higher vibration or are we going to sit and battle this thing called fear? Are we going to be in fear and stay there and fear everything that comes along the path until, you know, we finally just wake up one day and say, no more, no more. I don't want to battle fear anymore. I want to release fear. I want to be fully in the presence of love. I want to accept the love that is within me. I want to grow that love. I want to be that love. It's funny how easy that is when you really truly let it go. I mean, think of it like flying, like a bird flying in the sky. I don't think birds have fear where they say, I'm not going to fly. I think they just fly. So that's how we should see our energy as well is just letting go with anything that doesn't seem like you are getting to a really clear resolution and it feels like it's a push pull energy and it's back and forth and you're not getting the res resolution and it's just feeling like it's too much, like too heavy of an energy. It keeps you up at night. It's in your thoughts constantly. Maybe it's time to release that so that you can be in your sense of peace within yourself, be in that freedom so that you can create a new belief system that doesn't even go into that place of fear and doesn't go into those battles. You know, sometimes as time passes, we see it differently as well. So if you get into a place where something does feel like a conflict, taking a step back, taking a pause, meditating for a while, just going to do something different, it brings it into a new energy. You know, you could go do something so random and just have fun, you know, start laughing about something, go do karaoke, whatever it is, right? You do something fun and then as soon as you do that, you look at your life and you go, why am I even worried about anything? Like, why am I worried about, you know, financial things or the state of the world or why people are mad at me or if I'm doing the right thing? We go into all these different thought patterns about things. Now, we do have to acknowledge and understand that there are things that are happening and that people are in different states of enlightenment and understanding of who they are. But just know that even though we're all in different stages and there's things going on in the world, the best place for us to be is not in a place of fear and fighting those things, but in a place of loving, in a place of sharing and connecting. And that will transform the energy. Just think of 
like a cup of love. If you have a cup and you have more love than you have fear, you're going to be drinking from the cup of love more of the time than you're going to be fear drinking from fear. And then what's going to happen is your mind is going to know it enjoys the love more than the fear. And that will connect to other people in situations and across the world. And that will transform the world. Thank you for the comment. Knowing is key. I love that Lady Diana of all people came through. She knew her worth despite her personal lack of support. I know this is very true. There was a point in time when I channeled um, Lady Diana way back when, when I first started this journey of channeling. And what was interesting is she talked to me a lot about her situation and how she didn't have her voice and support for what she was believing in as far as her, you know, her, her marriage and just different things that were around her, some of the people around her. And she kind of felt like she was in it for too long and was silenced. And in that way where your, her energy was pressed down and, and, you know, kind of suffocated in a way. And so she really, really, really wants to speak about how, especially with women, to be more stronger in your voice and your sense of knowing and know when something is right and when it's wrong. And immediately when you feel that that is not for you, that somebody is silencing you or they're like taken away from your energy to move out of that as soon as you can to go ahead and shift out of that experience, that environment around, you know, from away from someone if you need to, or at least take time and pause away from it. Like take up time away to like regenerate your energy, like reinvigorate yourself, heal yourself, but know when something definitely needs to go away, when it needs to end, when it's like, okay, this is too much. This is not me anymore. This is like, I wasn't aware. I wasn't awake at that time. And I think that's part of her journey. She talked a lot about that. Like she just knew that it's almost like she came in for this contract and this purpose. Her main purpose was to help children and to bring in that vibration and to open people's eyes to what that was in the world. But she, also was coming in to show women how to stand tall and begin to formulate, formulate what they wanted on their path, maybe to realize that no matter how they would be looked at, no matter how much of the public eyes on you, who you are, you know, what that is for you, you can make that change. It's hard to do that when you see that other people are looking up to you or expecting you to follow a certain path. So she definitely followed her heart. She followed her beliefs to say, this is more important to me. My happiness is more important. You know, love is more important to me and helping people and being a humanitarian. That is more important to me. And so she just followed that more. She became more enlightened to that. And she talked about, um, you know, when you are in a battle of the mind or some kind of battle, she said, who wins in that battle? Do you or I win? Everyone loses. Everyone loses when you do not unite through love. She says, united we stand, divided we fall. Through it all, love love conquers all. And not by a sleight of hand, as though you were a magician performing a magic trick, but by faith and honesty. She's talking about, you know, being real. When you're being authentic and real in your endeavors and what you feel called to and what how you want to give back, that's how you make changes in the world. Not by trying to be somebody you're not, not by trying to get attention or, you know, worrying about the money or the other things, you know, the limelight or whatever it is, just being real and authentic with people. I think she was a very good example of she could connect with anybody. And it was like, she didn't have a status, like a title or anything with that person. She was just real with them. This, she talked about having the strength of a thousand knights, you know, defending their causes and beliefs and being in their state of, you know, finding their, their, what their pathway that was right for them. She said also, you're, you are all stronger as individuals and as a collective, when you unite your hearts together, you know that they say two heads are better than one. Well, what about 10 hearts or a hundred hearts? One million hearts shining their lights, their beacons, you know, strength, have that strength in your convictions, that courage to take a stand. What if you all united in that, that energy of being a million hearts, a billion hearts, whatever that is, however big and expansive that can be connected 
unite through love. Imagine if we all did that at the same time and we just projected that energy. She said, you must take a stand for the injustices of life. Speak your truth. Do not back down. Take a stand for what you believe in, for the love that grows within all of us. You know, take a stand for the love that is within us. Believe in that and begin to build that more is what she's saying there. And you are here to serve the greater good, to raise your expectations, to connect with the God source, the creator, what you believe in. Ask yourself, what if I did more? What if I save the world by first saving myself from the destruction of fear, like the destructive forces of fear? What if I just started with myself and I built that love within myself, within my heart, and I really cared for myself and saw the good in myself and I projected that light and that became the strong force of love? She says, isn't it a travesty that hierarchies exist? Who put those there? Are you better than me? Am I better than you? Or, or are we all the same? Why can't we see the truth? You know, your light is the truth. I talk about this a lot about the light in your heart and, you know, your soul and how that is going to show you the truth. You'll never have fear within that light. You'll always have love and you'll see the truth. She said, you have become proud citizens of mercy, of love, of a child, of learning about forgiveness and compromise. Now you must save the, the children. You must save the children. And they are your future. They are here to remind you that without them, you are all lost and have forgotten who you are. So what she was trying to say there is that when we interact with children, especially now, the ones that have come in in the last few years, what we're seeing is a reminder of who we are and how our light can be brighter. And they're just kind of showing us that there is a choice that we can do that. They're reminding us that we can open up and follow our spiritual calling, follow that higher awakening. <clears throat> if you have a question, you can put it in the chat and I'll jump in and answer it at any time. Just go ahead and put the question there. If you're joining me now, I'm talking with Lady Diana, also known as Princess Diana, and we're getting a few messages from her. And she also talked about how she sees us as, as these great beings, and sometimes we don't acknowledge that. And one of the things she mentioned, her the words that she used to describe us was angelic beings or master angels, light workers. She talked about us being philosophers of great works, light bearers, strength stewards, captains of the mighty ships of the God source. And she also gave me a little bit of a description of what it was like for her when she um, left the earth. She said, I went home to heaven, what she's calling heaven, but not by way of floating up. As I went to the right and through the white doorway, I realized that it existed in my heart and had been there all along. Isn't that interesting? So she was just talking about how it was different than what she thought it might be. It was quite easy for her to just step outside of her, her physical body and kind of go to this next experience, this next place. And she realized that as she was doing that, it didn't change who she was. It just opened her up fully to her heart being in her presence, like only feeling that love, right? So that's what happens when you cross over. But she said she always had that within her, but the intensity the true nature of it, the purity of it, she couldn't quite feel until she stepped out of her body and saw that perspective of it and realized that it wasn't like it was way out there somewhere else. It, heaven wasn't way out there. Heaven was within here. And so she just acknowledged that's what it was like for her. Um, <clears throat> does she have a message for you? <clears throat> <clears throat> she says that you are, you know, one of the many light workers that have been brought to the earth at this time. 
and you have a sensitive spirit. And so she acknowledges that you have a similar connection to her and the way that she carried herself and how she noticed the sensitivities of other people and children. And she was very aware of that. And that's how she would talk to people and she would interact with them in that way. And so she's acknowledging that you have that sensitivity as well. You are aware of it within the way you interact with other people and within yourself. And she's saying you need to be kinder to yourself and, you know, re you know, understand and remember that sometimes there's things that are going to come at you that make you question whether you are following the right path. You have this question in your mind right now of, what is next or is this the right thing you know just kind of that what is the next thing what is the right thing and so she's saying you know don't worry about the mind trying to question as much she says to go into your heart space to find the answer so you may want to meditate on that within your heart and say well what is the next thing for me right now what am i being called to and if it's something really big, you know, like a big shift or big opening, like a, you know, new pathway all of a sudden, just to know that if you can start to be comfortable with the truth of you, how beautiful you are, how you have this gift within you, then it'll become easier. And you'll just say, you know what, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to be this person that I am. I'm just going to be authentic. I'm going to start to do these things. I'm not going to be scared anymore. You know, sometimes it'll feel weird. Sometimes I'll be awkward stepping into a new role, a new pathway slightly, but it is me and I can't be anybody but me. So I hope that answered your question. That was a message from Lady Diana. <clears throat> and she also talked about, you know, sometimes you have to leave the earth to really learn about how to love. Isn't that interesting how that happens? Like we're here and we're present. And we're, we always know we have to be more aware of being present, you know, being in the present moment, kind of like anchoring ourselves and bring, being in our breath and in our heart and just experiencing fully what's in that moment rather than thinking in the past or what's coming up tomorrow. But she says, you know, it's just so easy. We get so caught up in things that we forget that we have a choice to really live more fully here. And she says, you know, you're all fully alive right now, but are you, you know, what brings your heart to life? So start to think about that more and how you can do all the things you really want to do. I mean, what if you only had another week to do everything? What would you do in that week? What is the most important? So think about that. I want everybody to take that on Let's Let's do a little homework assignment here. They're going to give you all something to do. So when you get off of this um, event tonight, I want y'all to write down all the things you would do if you had one week to live on earth before you crossed over. What would you do in that week? And then begin to look at that list and see, hmm, there's some things there that maybe I haven't been including in my life. Maybe I haven't taken the chance. You know, what are those last few things? If you could leave one thing behind, if you could do something that was really fun, connect with somebody, whatever it is, what would it be? So they want y'all to think about that more because we just get so bogged down by stuff. We forget that we really don't have that much time here. We're coming here to do our work and, and experience love. And really part of the work is just being free and, and feeling like you can connect with your friends and family and just have fun. Sometimes it doesn't have to be that hard, right? You can just, you know, be in a simple situation and say, okay, this is, this is why I'm here. I'm here just to laugh and love. And that's, that's the ultimate, you know, way that you can connect to your pathway is just saying, look, if it's simple, if I say, Hey, this is all I'm here for is just to laugh and love every day. Then anything else that comes along your path is so much easier because you realize you've already accomplished those other things. So there's no checklist anymore. Thank you all for putting your comments in the chat. If you have any questions for Lady Diana or a spirit 
guide or an angel or anything in general, just you go ahead and put your question in the chat. I'll come back to it in a bit. Thank you all for joining me tonight, by the way. This is a very interesting topic, and I really loved talking to Lady Diana. I probably will do more um, channel messages with her because she really has a lot of um, different perspectives on how we can change the world, how we can connect to the children more and do more with that. And she says, you know, what does bring you to bring your heart to life? What brings you to your heart? Is it music that opens your heart? Is it something that you are passionate about? Is it something that you have yet to discover? See, that's interesting. Maybe there's something you haven't really tapped into yet. And so just be aware that you're still on this journey from beginning to end or for eternal life or however you want to view it. You are just on a journey. Your soul's on this journey on this earth plane right now. And from, from this moment of when you came here on earth to the end of this earth experience, you will open up more and you will have more experiences that will get you to that place of higher knowing, of knowing what's right for you. She says also to give to each other, help each other. For when you do, your heart opens and you become courageous and take action towards change. She really wants to emphasize taking action towards change, changing the world somehow, leaving the world a better place, doing something that really shifts things and creates this way of we're not just accepting things for what they are. We're saying, you know what, maybe there's people suffering. Maybe there's children that need help. Maybe there's something that I can get involved in to really make a big difference. Even the littlest things matter, though. You know, you can help somebody that is close to you, not like a neighbor or a friend or something. And that is a part of sharing that love and shifting the world. She also mentioned we all need to consistently allow the metamorphosis of our energy because she says our energy can never be the same. So energy is always shifting. It's never stagnant or never really wants to be stagnant. Now, can it become stagnant? Yes, but it doesn't want to be. It wants to move. It wants to flow. And so she's talking about how we're really always just changing and, and doing a new metamorphosis all the time. Every day, every week, we're you know realigning our energy, deciding what is right for us. From moment to moment, you're growing stronger in this transition, becoming the butterfly, feeling more like you are coming home. And she says, home is love. There is no place like home. When you are accepting your light as the one true source of all faith, and faith opens that door to love. So when you, when you accept that the light is the source of all faith, then that faith will open the door to love. Love blooms where faith is planted. So see, it starts with faith. It starts with having that faith when things are not present in front of you physically for you to see, and then creating a belief that becomes part of your mind, and then having that feeling within your heart, and then transferring that into your reality in some way. Whatever action steps you take, whatever you begin to you know, connect to in your world or who you cross paths with. So if you're joining me, I'm talking to a few spirits tonight. We just talked to Lady Diana, also known as Princess Diana. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat, any comments, anything at all. So right now I'm going to switch over to talking to Judy Garland. And so it was interesting. I realized that she was coming in because I was compiling some information earlier where I was trying to get messages from them. And when Lady Diana said, there's no place like home. I knew immediately who was coming in next. So Judy Garland came in after that and she said, it is lovely to be here today. And she's been waiting for a while to come on the show to talk to y'all and be in this. She says, this, this is like a great time to be alive in your physical plane on earth because you are, you are learning so much. She says, yeah, you're, you're opening up, you're awakening so much that you're, you're aware of your true self. You're aware of these other lives. You're, you're aware of, you know, what's important to you, that you're, you're built from love, that you have a choice that you can make in this earth and how you can, you know, change your energy and get in alignment with what you desire. She says, you are so, you know, lucky to be on the earth at this time when you are able to tap into that, to tap into the spiritual connection, to see what is right for you. She says, I was a rising star. I left suddenly my personal choice. We all make choices, don't we? But what are you going to choose? You know, she says, I see you like shining things, like sparkly things, pretty objects, beautiful homes, pretty flowers, 
all the things that remind you of the beauty within you. She says, remember to show people the beauty within you by saying, by, by shining your light. So you are aware of that beauty. You know who you are, but sometimes we forget that other people may not know us that well. They may not see that real inner being, that light that's like our true passion. Sometimes we don't even share that with people. Maybe we're afraid to share because sometimes people do put us down or question us. She says, remember though, to show that more, to show your inner light, to be happy. Even when other things are going on, sometimes that's hard to do, but even if somebody else is not in that happiness and they're kind of struggling, just know that you can still hold that light. The more you are yourself, the more other people will be themselves and they'll be happy too and share that happiness with you. And then she talked about um, also this thing about being authentic again. So there was this connection between Lady Diane and Judy Garland about just being really authentic and true to who you are. She says, you all have a unique calling and you may tap into this higher knowing first by bringing in your awareness, right? Just kind of like opening up to what is that? What is the awareness of my calling and who I am? And then you begin to question and ask, ask your spirit guides, ask the other side, ask the universe, what else do I need to know? What comes next? What is on my pathway? And just let that come into you in any way that it needs to come. It could be coming through different signs and synchronicities, or it might come through somebody bringing a message or something happening suddenly in your life, like maybe something like an opportunity presents itself that hadn't been there before. So she says, first, you know, bring that awareness, then ask for guidance from the universe or your guides. And then she says, this is the hard part that we really struggle with on earth. In the earth plane, we just get into our, you know, thoughts too much and overthink. She says, then you trust. Trust is a biggie. That is how you are going to allow your true self to be born. That is how you're going to follow your path. I'll give you an example of this because when I started to do this work and I began to open up to my intuitive powers and using different um, clear senses, you know, seeing things, hearing things, you know, at first I only used maybe one of my senses very strongly. And I wasn't sure, you know, what all of it meant. And it was first angelic frequencies that were coming in. So I was hearing angels, but I could have said, well, that's not for me, or can that be true? Or maybe that's not real. Or what is that? I could have said a lot of different things, but instead I just said, Hmm, this is interesting. So sometimes when you have something come in that you don't know what it is, and maybe it's something different and even a little bit feeling like it's almost scary at first because it's so intense and so real to you. Just know that you can just observe it at first and just say, hmm, let me see what this is. This is interesting. Let me just kind of, you know, let it unfold naturally. Let me discover it in more of an, a natural flow of life and see where it goes. And that's what I did. I just started to see where it led next. You know, if you feel called to do something, you'll find that too. You'll get one thing and then the next step and it'll just continue to grow. And you'll realize one day that your trust built your pathway and that all of a sudden you have all these things in your world that weren't there before. It's like maybe a year has gone by and you forgot that you started from a different place of just being a beginner in a way. You know, sometimes we're, we have to remember we're, old souls, you know, you know, we've been here before, but sometimes we're just beginners because we are remembering and we're trying to remember what our light is and, you know, what is that inner knowing and how can we tap into that? So just know that it's in that trust. That's where you're going to build your pathway. Trust is an important part of your process, your journey of opening up. And she said, if you don't trust, then you don't believe. And if you don't believe, then you don't have faith. See how that's all connected? That's very interesting. How just a simple thing, you know, just a simple energy shift of trusting. That can really solidify your beliefs and your faith. So I want you all to be mindful of where your beliefs are directing you. Is it taking you on your path or off your path? Is it, you know, maybe challenging you and making you have anxiety instead of feeling like you're in a place of peace? Really start to look at that 
every time you have a thought that feels like it's too heavy, it causes you an anxious feeling, maybe it keeps you up at night, it has you worrying, it doesn't feel like it's you know the right thing for you, or maybe it's just keeping you in that limbo state. Begin to release that and say, that thought is not mine, I send it to the light. And see, that's a way that you can easily shift something really quickly. And it begins to train your mind not to stay in that loop, not to keep repeating those patterns, and to let go of those beliefs and finally bring in the beliefs that are true for you. So maybe if you're in a belief that I can't do that because I don't know enough to follow that path, you know, I don't have the knowledge or I don't have the experience, you can change that thought, that belief. You can start to begin with the belief of I am powerful. You know, maybe just a simple belief of I am powerful allows you to then believe more and create more thoughts that, oh, okay, I can do this. I can follow this path. I am on the path. I am where I need to be. I am a powerful being of light. It's really simple when you just bring it back down to that. Yeah, it is interesting that they are these women that had these strong voices, yet they were suppressed or kind of controlled in a way. If you look at it, like Judy Garland, I think, kind of fit into a mold of certain things. And maybe she was almost, I almost feel like the way she's describing herself is like a puppet in a way. And it's unfortunate that it is what it is. Now, she was meant to be the star that she was in that way. But she says that it has a lot to do with that time. And, you know, that time period that she came in, there was this way that energy was more masculine and more controlling. And it was just in this certain program, if you will. So I want to go back to that idea of being stuck in programs and that we are always shifting this over time. If you look at where we were when she was doing her work versus now, how much are we in those programs or how much are we out of those programs and saying, no, thank you. I don't want to believe that anymore. I know that I'm powerful. I know I can do anything. I don't want to believe anything that doesn't align with my heart. And so that is something that she wants us to remember. And she says, I was one of many stars, but you are all stars too. And how you choose to, to live your life determines your destiny. It is up to you. You have the power to choose to create your destiny. You are all stars in the making, learning how to adjust your thoughts and beliefs and in doing so adjust your light. And then she also talked about the concept of heaven, too. She brought that in as well, saying, yes, heaven is in here in your heart, not out there. And when you begin to see that, you'll learn that here on your experience on earth, what you put into your heart becomes your heaven on earth. That's pretty amazing, right? I want everybody to do one more thing. When you get off this call, this, this um, gathering, I want you to also think about what you can put in your heart what would be good to keep there, to grow it, to allow that heaven to be really real for you and to shift your world? And then I want you to do it for 30 days. Put something different in your heart and begin to hold that space. Just hold it and breathe it in. And as you do that, observe how your world changes to reflect that. And then at the end of the 30 days, I want you to look at your life and how much different is it and then do it again. And again and again. And then next year, I want you to come back and think about that again. Where are you now that you have aligned your heart with your purpose, allowed that light and created that heaven? She also said that she wanted y'all to be good to yourself. I'm talking to Judy Garland right now, if you're just now joining me. She said, be good to yourself and don't give up when you think you cannot walk another mile. The party is never over. It is an internal light that shines on forever. That is such a beautiful line. You know, we have so many times when we feel like we're not going to be able to make it to the next step. Like we're so overwhelmed with life. And it is in that realm of, okay, I don't know if I can make it. I know I'm close. I feel like I'm close. I've tried really hard, but it's not working. And I don't know why it's work, not working. What is wrong? And why does it feel like a struggle? And why is life so hard? And she's saying, you know, sometimes you get into those moments when you're fighting yourself. 
when you're fighting the process, the divine flow of life. So instead to like re really let things flow, let them be in the right timing. Maybe it's not time yet, but just don't give up too. keep your power in your intentions, in your desire for things, in the ways that you want to live your life. Keep your authenticity strong. Stand up for what you believe. And this is something I'm going to go back to Lady Diana when she talked about this. Stand up for what you believe in. I don't care what it is. Stand up for it. If you're not the voice for what you believe in, who's going to do that? You know what is in your heart. You know what your passion is. You are an important voice, an ambassador for what that cause is. And maybe you will make a significant change when you stand in that power. So I want all of y'all to take that away tonight to really begin to reflect on what are you going to do different tomorrow? What are you going to begin to do in your world? How are you going to begin to take a stand to stand up for what is right for you to become these ambassadors of love? to stand in the love energy and connect that more and to, you know, join it among other souls. Okay. And so if you have any more questions, you can put them in the chat and we're going to wrap up real quick with a really interesting ending. So another spirit that came through at the very end and we're almost done with our event for tonight because, um, you know, there's only so many spirits that can come in at one time. There's, there's a lot that want to come in, but we'll come in with some more next week. But Ed McMahon decided to come through. So that's a little strange. It was unusual because I had these two female energies and all of a sudden he stepped in. But I realized why he did is because he had very similar beliefs and he believed in the, the idea of anything as possible. He said, what gift do you wish to choose? What is behind door number one, door number two, door number three, and on and on and on. And there's so many doorways. There's so many openings. There's so many portals of light. There's so many opportunities for you. Look in the world. How many opportunities can you create? Can you choose from? You have all these different pathways. You can slightly align with different pathways depending on where you want to follow your heart. And he says, your beliefs lead you there to that pathway. He says, I wasn't a magnificent person in the sense that I was superhuman or like a superhero. I just believed in what was possible. To me, things that were impossible never existed. He only believed that there was always a way for things to be possible. He said, my imagination was the possibilities. And when I believed in them, they came to life and reality. I gave people dreams, access to their dreams, but really it was there. It was there all along. Their dreams were there. I was just giving them permission and access to their dreams. And I gave them permission to be who they, who they are. And so that was really beautiful. He says he gave them access to the golden keys of wisdom. He also talked very briefly about how he went or he came from, he came from Atlantis and he was there as a healer scientist working with people to help them bridge knowledge and a state of purity in their thoughts. So this is important why he's, why he's bringing this through is because your pure thoughts are and beliefs, your strong beliefs and pure thoughts are what are going to create what resonates with your heart and what becomes in your reality. He said, pure thoughts heal the heart from a higher frequency. And you all have this tool and be great scientists of the light in using this tool. So that brings me to a little point, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to hold that, that pure thought, but just know that you will learn that over time. As you meditate, as you do breathing exercises, you go outside in nature, you begin to see the simple ways of life. And that brings you to a state of purity. You see how simple things can be. And that's where your thoughts become healing for your heart. And so I think that's about all I have for tonight, but I'm going to talk to you briefly about, I have a meditation tomorrow if you are interested, and it's going to be a healing temples of Atlantis meditation. So you can go to my website at pambarsh.com and you can go ahead and sign up for it there. It's going to be tomorrow. 
Um, it's going to be tomorrow at um, 2 o'clock central. And it'll be really good. What we're going to do during the meditation is I will take you all through the meditation and guide you through the experience. And then we'll have a time when you can come out of the experience and ask questions, you know, and maybe you'll connect to something from Atlantis that will help you for your rem remembering on your path or some kind of healing frequency. And so just check that out. Um, just go to my website and you can sign up for it. It's going to be really, it's going to be a really amazing experience. I can tell that the energy is going to be very pure, very high vibrational to help us to shift on our path more, to get us to be more on our light worker path. And so if you go ahead and check that out tomorrow, then, you know, you can see what it's all about. And there's other um, meditations that are going to be coming up as well. So if you go to the website, you can see that the other ones, there's going to be ones for Lemuria and other, other ones that I'm going to be having come up soon. And then also I have a YouTube channel that y'all can check out that, I'm going to be putting more audios and videos on there and doing a lot of things with bringing in some messages from spirits and, you know, higher ascended masters, but also I'll be putting a lot of things about, you know, our spiritual path and awakening and energy shifting. So go to shine from your soul, the YouTube channel, and you can subscribe and get notified when there's new videos and audios that are going to be uploaded on there. And I would just like to grow that community so we can all stay connected and, you know, keep being in this vibration where we are trying to come together and basically be the stewards of the light, you know, be the light workers, be in that higher frequency. Um, and if you want to get a session with me, you can go to my website. Yes, I do private sessions. Um, I can do a lot of different types of sessions with you. I can tap into your past life. I do healing sessions. Um, I also bring in spirits and so I can also look at your chakra energy, your aura and see what is there, what might need to be shifted. So there's a lot of different ways that we can look at it depending on what your needs are. And usually spirit will direct me and say that this is what you need to know. And so that's how it comes through. So if you want to contact me, you can either go to my website and sign up for a session, or you can also send me a message in Facebook and I'll get back to you that way as well. So I want to thank y'all for gathering tonight because this is what creates this new energy shift. You know, this is what creates the love energy is us just coming together and uniting, just like Lady Diana talked about. As we're uniting through love, we are shifting out of fear. We're allowing for that to dissolve, to transform, to be who we are. And I want everybody to go forward and know that they have that empowerment. Y'all have the power to do anything. Anything is possible. You can create any pathway. You can go through a process of, you know, shifting your light more and getting more in alignment with what feel is right and just find more joy and love in your life every day. And all of those little things build up. You know, if you think about it, it's just like if you're building anything in life, if you're, you know, if you start to build a house, you build from the foundation and you go up and you create all the different rooms and the, in the way that you decorated and everything. And that is what your light is like. You're building it, you're growing it, you're expanding it. And that is what you're creating. You're creating the heaven in your heart on the earth. So thank you all for joining me tonight. If you have any more questions that didn't get answered, you can send a question in chat. Or if you want to sign up for a session, go ahead and go to my website at pambarsh.com or send a message to me in the Facebook comments in my, um, on my page or in my group, Shine From Your Soul. Thank you all. Have a good night.